Hi, Steve here from Post Processing Mastery. Now, in this Dodge and Burn Photoshop tutorial, I'm giving you my number one technique for making your images pop right towards the end of your workflow. So it's quite a simple technique to use and to sort of get the idea of, but when you start using it, then you know I think that you'll really find that your images are gonna start having that refined and polished look that you've been looking for. So remember, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, just to let me know so that I can keep making more and remember that you can subscribe to my channel as well if you want to be updated every time I publish a new video. So finally, before we get to the tutorial, if you haven't yet downloaded my Introduction to Luminosity Masking PDF, then I'll put a link in the description below the video right here. So you can click that, go off and download it, and you'll be getting started with Luminosity Masking in no time at all. So with that said, let's get on with the tutorial. Right, now this is gonna be quite a quick tip to show you, but don't let that fool you with like how powerful it can actually be in you know really making your images pop when you get towards the end of your workflow in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna show you is how to use the dodge and burn tools to create contrast and basically paint contrast into your image to really make certain objects stand out and just to really kind of create more of a 3D effect with some of uh, some of the parts of your photos, basically. So I've just taken one of my uh, one of my older photos here to show you a quick demonstration, and I've taken off the layer uh, in which I actually did this before when I was processing it, um, so that I can basically just recreate that and show you what I did. So actually, I'll just get rid of these two layers as well, which I think are just adding a bit of a uh, bit of some other effect. Um, so. Yeah, basically we've got the raw file uh, as the background layer, then a few adjustments. Um, and then, yeah, we've got this dodge and burn layer. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just hide these out of the way. So I'll just create a group, get rid of that. Um, so the first thing you need to do is create a merged copied layer. So you can dodge and burn onto it. Uh, via the menu, you can go select all, edit, copy merged, or and then edit paste and that creates this new layer on top of the rest of your layers which is a pixel layer that uh, contains like a copy of as if you'd stamped or merged all of your layers together now there is a keyboard shortcut to do that i always forget it so i basically just use the keyboards to uh, the keyboard to go command a to select all or control a if you're on a pc and then command shift c to copy or control alt shift and then C, that does the copy merged, and then Command or Control V to paste. Uh, so that's the slightly quicker way than going by the menu. I can't remember off the top of my head now what the keyboard command is to do that whole process in one, so I'll put it on the screen here now in, uh, you know, when I edit the video in a minute. Um, so yeah, from here, what we can now do is take the dodge, let's start with the dodge, and burn, uh, the dodge tool, we're gonna use both. And I'm gonna zoom in on these mountains in the background. And the whole idea behind what I'm gonna show you here now is that we want to dodge, so make lighter the, uh, the highlights or the lighter sides of objects and burn, i.e. make darker the shaded sides of certain objects. So for example here where we've got a bit of, uh, we've got a bit of texture in the mountain so like this, the sun is coming in from the left-hand side of the photo. So all of the left-hand edges are uh, lit directly by the sun. And then we've got some which are kind of slightly shaded and we can kind of experiment and, and make things a bit more uh, shaded than they really are. Um, but let's start off. So we've got the dodge tool. I'm gonna select mid-tones to begin with uh, on the range drop down here. So that's gonna make sure that I'm only uh, dodging things that are kind of in the middle of the histogram and exposure you really want to use a low number here so I'm going to start off with five and I'm just going to start brushing on some of the bright edges of these mountains in the background I'm going quite quickly here you might want to sort of take a bit more time and be a bit more accurate with what you're doing in your uh, with your images when you do this for real so as I do these brush strokes you're probably not seeing much difference as I do them but when I toggle this layer off and on you should see the uh, the overall effect 
Now we want it to be really subtle, so that's why I've got the 5% brush opacity there. Um, because, you know, you really don't want to be painting big, dark or bright lines across your image. Uh, so yeah, I've just kind of stroked the uh, the sort of the lighter edges of the mountain. So let's do a similar thing now with the burn tool. Select the midtones again, exposure about five, and I'm just going to zoom in to get a little bit more of an accurate uh, brush stroke on some of these darker edges. So I'm just darkening, and as I do that, what's actually happening? It's creating a little bit of a 3D effect so you know by increasing the contrast there we're making these uh, the ridges in the mountains kind of pop a little bit so you know if you've got time then go as uh, you know zoom in as far as you can and just do this really accurately um, and you know the, the time and effort that you put into this will be rewarded yeah, in the final image so, okay, just thinking if there's anywhere else. Okay, so let me zoom out now for a second. And yeah, that doesn't necessarily look at first glance like we've done anything, but let me just turn this dodge and burn layer off and on now. So here's before and here's after. So I'll just toggle this off and on a couple of times and you can see what I've done is just enhanced the localized uh, contrast in just that mountain. So brighter bits have got brighter, darker bits have got darker. And it's more, uh, it's more effective in making, the, uh, making certain objects like this kind of stand out than just adding regular contrast because you know we're brushing and basically painting the contrast in by hand. So it's a lot more accurate and um, yeah, it just, it just creates a better overall effect. So I'll just add a bit more. So it, with this image, if I was gonna do this for the whole image, I would then come across and do all of these mountains in the background. I'd probably actually, I think these trees are a really good candidate as well. So that can, yeah, that would really pop a little bit if I started just brushing into the bright, parts of the trees here and then uh, the shadows are actually quite dark so I don't know if I would necessarily need to uh, do anything with the shadows there but yeah there we go that's just a slight enhancement there just in the trees but uh, yeah that's basically the long and short of what I wanted to show you today um, yeah, so give it a go. So remember, just brighten the bright edges of your uh, of object in your image and then darken the dark edges. And what it gives you is this, especially, let me just grab a, a brush here. Um, yeah, especially if we just concentrate, just as I toggle this off and on, just look in this area here. Actually, that was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let me just draw that circle again on a layer that's not going to disappear. Um, yeah, just especially around here, that looks really good here and just makes that kind of leap off the page a little bit more. So there we go. I think that wraps this video up. So remember, just hit that subscribe button. Uh, it should be in the bottom right corner of the video if, uh, if you're not already subscribed. So yeah, just press that now and you can subscribe to my channel and be updated every time I publish a new video.